I was delighted to be asked, um, but imagine my horror when I found out it was a debate rather than a presentation. Um, so uh, I'm going to do my best. Uh, I've been asked to talk about targeted therapy prior to nephrectomy, uh, which is obviously not an established approach, uh, which I suspect gives me somewhat of a disadvantage in any debate. Nevertheless, I will do my best. Um, a number of disclosures, equally imbalanced. And we do uh, nephrectomies in metastatic disease, and the reason we do it is a hangover from the pre-TKI era, where individuals who present with metastatic disease with very few effective treatment options were um, shown to have a significant survival advantage associated with nephrectomy. As we can see from this study here, and there's a second study, both published in the New England Journal of Medicine. So it's a well-established approach, but the challenge, of course, is if you look at the median survival of that group of patients, it's somewhere in the region of 12 months, and we're now talking about median survivals of 30 months. So the question is whether or not this data is applicable for all patients in the VEGF TKI era. And I'm going to put it to you that it may be applicable for some patients, but actually we shouldn't be pursuing a one-size-fits-all approach. We need to pursue an individualized approach. And that's what I'm going to try and convince you of today, successfully or not. And actually, we know the answer to the question already. So the debate is effectively over. You can see from this slide here, and this is SEER's data. It's published or in, in press in International Journal of Cancer. And you can see the incidence of nephrectomy increased with the publication of those two. And then VEGF-targeted therapy came along. And clinicians in the US are voting with their feet. They're having conversations with patients. They're saying, we've got these new effective drugs. We're not going to do an upfront nephrectomy. We're going to give you systemic therapy immediately and see what happens. So we know already what the doctors think. The question is, what do the data show? And this is from the same publication, which is also in press. And this is um, a nephrectomy population, and this is a no nephrectomy population, and this is the era of targeted therapy. And there are many data like these, and when we look at retrospective analysis in the era of targeted therapy, it still seems that nephrectomy is important because these patients always do better. But I kind of put it to you that it's a bit more complicated than that because what we're doing is we're selecting patients for nephrectomy very carefully. I sit in clinic with my surgeons, they see a patient and they say, Tom, we're not gonna do a nephrectomy on this, on this patient. And this is a, an example of that type of patient. This is a 67-year-old 60, female, grade three clear, cancer, clear cell cancer, clearly operable, so fulfills all the criteria, but MSKCC, porous disease, raised LDH, anemic, hypercalcemic, bone and liver metastasis. And my surgeons are not operating on these patients. So when we go back into here, this comes into the non-nephrectomy group. And so we are going through a process of careful patient selection with this data. And so therefore, I don't believe this retrospective data actually is applicable for all patients. I'm going the wrong way, I'm sorry. So why not start VEGF-targeted therapy in this individual, give it immediately, and then see what happens? And the approach to this is kind of, I can start VEGF-targeted therapy within two or three days. I'm struggling with this relatively unwell lady. She's not going to have an effect in my institution for two or three weeks. She's going to have to go through a series of cardiac investigations and other bits and pieces. And during this period of time, it's likely that these metastatic disease is going to be progressing. And it's going to be the metastatic disease that will kill her in the end. This is some work from Brian Rini's group, and I think it is important, and it emphasizes the point a bit more clearly, in that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Clearly, if you have a massive primary tumor with one or two small lung metastasis and good risk disease, everyone should have an upfront nephrectomy in that population. But if you have a three or four centimeter tumor with porous disease and lung metastasis, clearly nephrectomy is not the immediate option of choice. This is an alternative approach that we've pursued, which is that we give VEGF targeted therapy immediately, and then after a period of, of time, a nephrectomy would occur in those patients who are developing clinical benefit. So this is the established approach, and this is a one-size-fits-all approach, and this is more of a pragmatic approach, where we start therapy immediately and see how we get on. Um, this was done within the context of a prospective trial, uh, 110 patients using posopinib, metastatic disease, no previous therapy, fit for nephrectomy and systemic therapy, so patients had to be fit for both treatments. Um, 
We recruited 102 patients, um, and the key to this is um, the majority of all, all patients were intermediate or poorest disease. These patients who are presenting with a primary tumour in situ are less well than those individuals who are presenting three or four years after nephrectomy with one or two lung metastasis. This is a challenging population, and this is why we need to be more pragmatic with this population. And this approach is not about trying to get control of the primary disease. It's not about shrinking the tumor down. It's not about making the, um, the surgery easier. This approach does none of those. It, but it does gain clinical benefit in 83% of patients. And what that effectively means is one in five patients are having primary progression of disease. And that fits very much in line with what you would expect with intermediate and porous disease. The key to this is not all patients go on and get nephrectomy, as you would imagine. The commonest reason, as I described before, is primary progression of disease. The issue, and I think this is an interesting debate, is whether or not we should be performing nephrectomies on people with inherently resistant disease. And I'm going to show you a slide in a minute which suggests maybe we shouldn't. The other issue I think was interesting is the second commonest reason was patient choice. Individuals doing exceptionally well with targeted therapy, a small primary tumour, a big metastatic burden with a nice response, and they're saying, I don't want to stop this targeted therapy, I want to keep going. So that's somewhat pragmatic, and that's a higher percentage than I originally thought. One of the, we, we did it with pazopinib, it can clearly be used with sunitinib, and I'll show you some sunitinib data in a minute. The question is, is this approach safe from a surgical perspective? And due to time, I'm not going to go through spectacular detail, but what I can tell you is we've got a post-operative death rate of about 3%, which is actually relatively low compared to contemporary series in the metastatic setting, which can be as high as 15% in, in some published series. The other issue is you have to stop the targeted therapy 48 hours beforehand and you probably shouldn't restart for at least three weeks. And there is this tumour rebound during that period of time in about 20% of patients. But effectively the surgery is safe. Keep going the wrong way. And the progression-free survival in this cohort was nine months, which as we know from COMPARS, which had good, intermediate and poor risk patients, this has only had poor and intermediate risk um, patients. A progression-free survival of nine months in, in this cohort is a modest, a good result in our opinion. It certainly doesn't suggest that this is not effective. And a median overall survival of 22 months, again, for intermediate and poor risk population, relatively attractive. And this is my first kind of slide, which is going to say, you know, should we be operating on all these patients? So let's look at that poorest group. And you can see that all of these poorest patients, median survival about nine months. So you get a patient who presents with poorest disease, a tumor in situ, that lady who I presented previously. And these patients, their median survival is only nine months. Should we be putting these patients through a nephrectomy under these circumstances? I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. There are randomized trials that are going to answer this very important question. But certainly at this time when we don't know the answer, surely a pragmatic approach would, would appear to be attractive. And this is sunitinib data, so everything I've talked about up to now is pazopinib data in 102 patients. This is 66, two, re two prospective studies, one of which is Axel Bex's and one of which is our own. And what we were able to do is stratify patients into four groups. Those using an identical approach, um, 18 weeks of therapy prior to surgery. And in those individuals who had intermediate risk disease, who had obtained clinical benefit, you can see they're doing, going on and doing very nicely here. But you can see, crucially, in those individuals who have primary progression of disease, particularly those with poorest disease, go on and do very poorly indeed. So using this approach, we can select out patients who we know are going to do well, but we also, while there is uncertainty, not putting patients through potentially a dangerous procedure. I mentioned there was a small progression during the treatment gap. If you restart the systemic therapy after this treatment gap, you can regain control of the disease. So the debate for me is not about um, 
uh, this upfront approach being attractive, but in this time of uncertainty, whether we should be less black and white, not nephrectomy, no nephrectomy for all patients, but be pragmatic for subgroups of patients and say in some patients it would appear reasonable to start systemic therapy first and then wait and see, which is effectively what this slide is saying here. These are the two randomized trials that I mentioned. Axel Bex leads one, um, Bernard Escoulier leads another, um, both answering different questions. This is nephrectomy versus no nephrectomy. Very important question. And this is a second question saying, everyone gets the nephrectomy, do you need it immediately or should it be delayed? These two studies together are going to answer the questions which I think need to be addressed as a matter of urgency in this field. So what can we say? We can say nephrectomy currently has an undefined role in the era of targeted therapy. So immediate nephrectomy in all patients seems somewhat counterintuitive to me, which I think is the issue for the debate today. Some patients may not be benefiting from this nephrectomy, and I feel strongly that that's the case, that some patients may not be benefiting. The attractive approach of giving targeted therapy is it can be started immediately and it can sift out patients who we know are going to do badly with VEGF refractory disease, progression of disease in the bone in six weeks. Surely we shouldn't be performing nephrectomies in those patients. And delayed nephrectomy keeps options open for patients in the future and is therefore attractive. So this is not a, uh, uh, a reflection of my personal life. This is a reflection of this, uh, uh, of, of this talk. Um, a pragmatic approach with an individualized slant. While we don't have to, and while there's no evidence that we should, let's not commit early and never say never. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed.